Yeah, I made this uh, with help from Jeff Larkin, who's the Open ACC uh, guru uh, in my team. Uh, and this is this is very different from yesterday, but this this is really based on something that people who do applications, uh, which includes me and, and lots of other folks, um, I think are really longing for. Uh, you know, it's come up. You know, Jeff said Larkin said it came up from Open ACC. I, I actually spent about an hour today talking to ECMWF at their workshop about this exact thing. Uh, so this is really driven by user interest, and I tried to come up with some ideas. Um, I'm not I'm not Bill Long. I don't pretend to be. I'm not a, a J3WG5 expert. Uh, so you know, please uh, take it with a grain of salt in terms of what it might look like in the future. But but I do think that this is an interesting idea that we should talk about in Fortran. Okay, so um, obviously I think most folks know what parallelism looks like in Fortran, but I'll just summarize it, talk about some use cases, show the prior art that this has been done before. It's worked in Fortran codes, just not with standard Fortran. Show some simple code, just basically why we need this, why, why you can't do it with other things. Talk about implementation details. Um, I wrote a blog post on this a while back. so. You know, you, you don't like the presentation, or you want to see a different version of it, or you want to tell me what everything I, I did is wrong. You know, there's this blog post, and you can read through it and comment on it. I need to update it, uh, but it's out there and 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 it complements this talk. Um, so you know, I I think everybody understands in Fortran 2018. We have two very nice parallel models. Uh, one is fine-grained parallel, so that's the explicit do concurrent stuff that that I think you know I talked about yesterday, and other folks know plenty about. And then there's the implicit form of this, obviously map mull transpose, and anything else that can be mapped onto a you know threaded or and or vectorized uh, library is, is you know fine-grained parallel opportunity. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we have coarse-grained parallelism. Um, you know, Co-Ray Fortran is. Uh, a well-designed PGAS model. Uh, it you know is isomorphic to some subset of MPI, uh, ignoring implementation quality and some other things. Um, but it's you know it is a distributed distributed memory uh, private data model, which is really really good for for many many things. Um, but but there's something missing here, which you know both of these models. Um, are, are some form of synchronous or um, of course may, maybe less control than you want over, over data. So, so you know, co-rays are great if you wanna copy data between images, but if you wanna share data within one image and do parallel things with it and do concurrent doesn't work for you, uh, you don't have anything. And you know, there's a lot of work outside of Fortran that indicates that there's a need for this. Um, everyone I think has heard of POSIX threads or threads in general. Um, Fortran uh, doesn't make them explicit, doesn't like to talk about them. And, and they're you know, very smart people who think threads are bad, you know, Ed Lee at Berkeley. Um, so threads aren't the right model, uh, but the use of threads in almost any other programming language or async or other things like it has, has shown that we really need something that that does does the job. It doesn't have to be called a thread or or, or have any of the, the the bloat that threads do. Um, but we need something that's asynchronous and and task like. So not not a full on image, but also not the fine grainness of do concurrent. So that's what I'm proposing. Uh, I I don't claim to know the answer. I just know that there's something missing in the middle. So a very simple example of this. This is pretty clearly motivated by GPUs, um, but it's, uh, you know, which I think is important enough on its own, but it's not the only reason. So imagine you have a code like this, you have some sequential thing, maybe reading data, you do parallel computation, uh, and then you have a sequential output. Okay, this is a sequential thing, you have to do these things in order. Um, and if you're doing them on a CPU and do concurrent saturates your whole CPU, well, that's fine, no big deal. We don't need anything extra here, this, this runs fine. Um, well, most complex applications don't just do read, compute, write, and call it a day. Um, they often do computation that is unrelated, 
next to um, parallel work. Um, or maybe they do two types of parallel work that touch different data and, and are completely independent until some later point. So if that were true, and we have um, some unrelated work, and we were to run this on a GPU, well, then it might be interesting. So if do concurrent runs on a GPU, as I showed yesterday, is certainly possible, then we have do concurrent looks like this. So you're running around, along on the CPU thread, you hit the parallel work, the GPU gets hot, starts doing its thing, um, and the CPU is just sitting there waiting for the, the do concurrent to be, to be finished and then to do something else. Well, that's, that's wasteful unless you can, of course, turn this thing off completely, and, and that's not how computers work. So a very obvious thing to do here is if you've got two different types of work, um, or you know, sequential on CPU doesn't even have to be that, it just, that's just the simplest example. Well, if we could do it asynchronously, we would just move up that unrelated work and run it at the exact same time. And you see now we basically took our time to solution if, if, if these lines are you know, quantitative, um, we just basically chopped 30% of our runtime off by being able to do different work on the CPU and the GPU or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so this is our motivation. This is you know, from an open ACC perspective, you know, everybody who's running on GPUs would like to do that asynchronously. They can do that with OpenMP, they can do that with open ACC. And while we can run do concurrent on GPUs, we can't do it asynchronously within Fortran. Uh, and that's something that you know, will limit the performance of pure Fortran codes on GPUs. So here's a you know, different type of example, not motivated by a platform model, but just by uh, the nature of computation. So I drew a very simple data flow graph. We take some arrays, we transform them with functions. So the data is letters, the, com uh, the operate computer operations are numbers. And you see here, uh, there are five different subroutine calls, but only three phases are required. And you say, okay, well this, who knows what, the, if, is this realistic? Um, lots of different things. But the big thing here is, Fortran compilers can almost certainly prove some of these computations are independent, especially you know, if you say pure and then you prove the arguments aren't, aren't, aren't the same uh, and the beauty of uh, no aliasing semantics in Fortran, um, you could prove this. The problem is compilers can't prove profitability. And this is one of the, the fundamental reasons why we need programming models that are more descriptive uh, from the user is we don't want compilers having to do you know crazy amounts of reasoning uh, to say you know this function call is is expensive enough to 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 do it asynchronously or not. Um, we want users to be able to say, hey, look, these are expensive operations. Do them at the same time in different places. Um, it's profitable to do that. So this is really about describing the profitability and the intent of how the user wants the code to execute, not telling the compiler something it couldn't learn. Um, about the independence of operations. So here's an example. Um, you don't have to worry about the details. You can read about it in the links. Um, the first one is where the picture comes from. And the second is actually a GPU application where we did this on uh, with asynchronous data flow. Um, but this is an example of a complex um, you know, data flow graph uh, that leads to a great deal of, of, of asynchrony between different types of computations. And it makes a huge difference. In the chemistry application we wrote on GPUs 10 years ago, it was a difference between about a 2X and a 5X on GPUs. Um, so the 2X was great. Um, maybe some people get excited about 2X, but, but we knew 5X was the limit and we got 5X, but we had to get it with um, making full overlap of all the different computations on the CPU and the GPU. So we were running asynchronously both places um, and that was essential for performance. There's a more interesting um, complicated pattern um, called, uh, I guess it's, it's wavefront parallelism, although not the AMD version of wavefront, but, it, but, but something else um, is, is where you have loop carry dependency, but you in from a you know, vector traditional loop level parallel standpoint, but you have coarse grain parallelism at some level if you transform the iteration space. So you can do this with loops. It's really painful. Um, I give a much longer talk about this that I don't have time to cover. Um, you can do it 
with, with polyhedral arithmetic and fun stuff like that. Or you can just write it in terms of tasks. And it turns out this is a really powerful way to do um, this type of thing, which shows up in, in a bunch of different application domains, including bioinformatics and, and, and um, nuclear bomb physics um, and, and reactor physics. Um, so, you know, it's, this is a potential application too. I don't know if this is the model that's, that's going to get into Fortran. This one is a little more tricky to resolve. Anyways, so those are the motivations. So prior art, um, OpenMP and OpenACC have both done it. I can't teach you all about them, um, but I will show you just examples so you know what to Google for if you want to go read more about it. The OpenACC model is simpler. Um, and maps more directly to the implementation details. Um, it doesn't expose them. It's just um, they're aware, you know, OpenACC really is aware of the fact that people do these asynchronous things with queues. And so it says, okay, you've got basically an async stream. Um, there's a default stream and then you can identify them. And that means, you know, you can statically instantiate the number of streams you need. And then you start filling them with, the, you know, filling them with operations. And it flows real nice and implements very cleanly. OpenMP is a lot more general, and generality is really good for users, but the implementation is a little bit harder. And I've talked to the um, person at Intel who's spent a lot of time on this, and he said it's pretty hard um, to do all the, de the fine grained dependencies. Um, fine grained dependencies are tremendously powerful, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it, there are some questions about whether this is you know, implementable on all the hardware by everybody. Um, and that may be a reason to, to moderate what we expose to users. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, neither one of these is perfect and for Fortran, certainly. And so the community will have to discuss, you know, the trade-offs between implementation effectiveness and, and generality, and then decide what's good for Fortran. So uh, just as an example, so on the left is the OpenACC model. So you see here, you've got a parallel loop nest. You could think of that as being just like a do concurrent with an async and you can put a letter, you know, put a number on that and, and do different streams if, you, if you've got multiple streams of work and then the weight will either wait on one stream or all of them. Then the tasking model uh, in OpenMP has these dependencies, which are memory locations. Um, and that's, you know, really powerful, also challenging to implement. Um, I've written a bunch of different versions of the, of the OpenMP stuff, which you can read about. It's linked at the bottom. Um, and you can see how it works and how it compares to, to other models um, and, and you know, the, the pros and cons. The performance for the, for the expressiveness is really quite good. Um, you can get better performance if you work really hard, um, but that working really hard tends to be less portable. Um, so here's a very simple example. Um, it, those of you who speak Finnish may recognize uh, I didn't use FUBAR, I used Uxikaxi Uh But anyways, uh, these are, this is obviously completely trivial and dumb, um, but the point is, this is just showing if you had three independent tasks, how would you implement it? So um, you can see all the code on the link through on my blog. It actually compiles and runs. I verified that. Um, it's not just slideware. Um, so what would you do? Three independent computations. Um, well, you could do it with co -rays. You could. There's, there's nothing stopping you from doing it. Um, you would have one, you know, one co one data thing for each image, um, and then you'd say, you know, if if image one do computation one, if image two do computation two. Um, it's really quite tedious. This is not natural. It doesn't look right, um, but you could do it. Uh, and then you do a reduce um, using co-arrays and, and, and you could absolutely get perfect scalability in this up, up to the limits of runtime overhead. The problem is um, life is never this simple. And in, in real applications, we share data between tasks. And if you shared data between these tasks, you'd have to use co-array operations to move the data back and forth. And if you were in a single shared memory domain, that would be silly. And, you know, even if, you optimize out the network and do it with straight mem copy, you still have to copy. And so this is not ever gonna be perfectly efficient. Um, and one of the other things that, you know, I've noticed over the years is people use tasking in part to deal with load balancing issues. Um, Co-raise doesn't solve that problem. Shouldn't, that's fine. MPI doesn't solve that problem either. But what that means is users were gonna do, load, have a load balance between different tasks. Um, they'd write their own load balancer. And I'm absolutely certain that they do it wrong because application programmers always write load imbalancers that aren't perfect. 
um, and then computer scientists have to come along and figure out that they're bad and try to fix them. Um, let's just avoid that and come up with a shared memory tasking model where load balancing is natural to write. Okay. Second version, do concurrent. It looks the same, it's very tedious, uh, but you could do it. Uh, you could write do concurrent and then, and then write, you know, case switch, if else, whatever, uh, to invoke the different functions. Uh, this, would, this would be terribly tedious in a, in a complicated case. And more importantly, uh, if do concurrent was mapped onto GPU threads or SIMD lanes, this implementation wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't work. This really only would make sense if do concurrent is implemented with you know, something like an OS thread uh, running on a CPU, and then you, you know, fill each core. And you know, the composition, who knows how this composes. And then, of course, function calls from do concurrent have limitations, probably good ones. Um, but again, it's tedious and error prone. And as I, you know, I think everybody knows when you get application programmers doing things in a way that makes no sense, you know, logically to them and doesn't really match the semantic, it's tedious and error prone. That's when you really want to change the language. So what would Fortran tasks maybe look like? I, I'm not a syntax guru. This is, you know, this is just some ideas for people to think about. So the first thing is um, tasks should be a scope and they should be a scope that allows private data. And uh, the good news is Fortran already has that concept in blocks. And so we could merely say that we have a task block, which has all of the properties of a block and also the properties of a task. And that would give us, you know, very easy to reason about, about private data and how things look to say, this is a block with some extra stuff on it. We could say it's async. It would look like OpenACC in this example. We could do other things. Um, but this is just one example where, where it'd be a pretty straightforward step from where we are to somewhere else. So then we'd have to think about, well, what are the constraints? We don't want to allow things in tasks that make it hard or impossible to implement them in a useful way. Um, and then the much harder problem is, um, what about shared state? So if tasks touch the same data, as long as they're both read-only, that's great, no problem. Read-only access is safe. The moment more than one of them or more than zero of them start to write data, we have a race condition potentially. And then we need a memory model and life gets very complicated. So what could we do? Um, well, the first one is, as I mentioned, block private data. That's a great idea. You need that. But the second thing is, how would we talk about shared state? Well, the good news is we already solved that problem with do concurrent. Uh, so there's locality specifiers. So there's local, local and it shared. Um, and I guess there's a proposal for reduce out there, reduction out there. So we could use that. Um, and then we would have complete you know, com compatibility with the concepts that are already in Fortran. We'd just be applying them to a different type of asynchrony or parallelism um, than do concurrent. Um, task reductions exist in OpenMP. Um, I think the concept is a little bit tricky and I haven't used it, um, but, but it's certainly something that has been thought about in other contexts and uh, work. Um, atomics would be nice, um, but I am fully aware that atomics and a memory model is a very, very not small activity uh, to add to a programming language. I think everybody knows, you know, Java and C++ and C all spent, you know, the better part of a decade working on that. Um, and that may not be the right thing for Fortran. So I'll just leave it at that. I don't know the answer. Um, so we could also think about having asynchronous tasks as uh, function calls, I think uh, the safest thing to do here would be to say those subroutines would need to be pure because then they don't have side effects. Um, and that's really nice behavior. Whether or not application programmers are happy only having asynchronous tasks on pure subroutines, um, I don't know. I can't speak for all the application people. I think it would be a challenge in some cases and not in others. Um, the syntax here, I have um, no belief that this is the right syntax. Um, it's weird to put task on one end and async on the other. One could move them around, come up with something totally different. I don't know the answer. Other people smarter than me will figure this out if, if the community thinks that it's the right thing to do. Um, but just conceptually, the ability to make asynchronous calls, I think would make it really easy to make cer certain applications um, more scalable and efficient. So uh, summary, uh, Fortran has two great, great ways to write parallel call uh, code already. Uh, I think it needs a third um, that's, that's not one of the others. Um, 
We know that shared memory task parallelism has been implemented successfully in both OpenMP and OpenACC. Um, and of course, in programming languages that aren't Fortran, you know, Rust, C++, lots and lots of languages, even Python's got, got this stuff nowadays. Um, and, and I think Fortran really, uh, really needs it to be, to be productive and successful. Um, you can solve new classes of problems. Um, you could do, you just make simple things easy. Like if you have different types of physics in a weather code and they're gonna all run concurrently, and, and then you wanna combine the data afterwards. Well, you could do that. You could do non-blocking IO, you could do non-blocking co-arrays. Um, if, if people believe that that's the right thing to do, um, you could do non-blocking um, non asynchronous offload of do concurrent. Lots of good things can happen when you have this, this asynchronous task construct. Um, I really do think that, that working around this is either tedious and error prone or requires non-standard extensions. You know, I think a lot of the application community is very, very comfortable with OpenMP and OpenACC. I do know that some of the, um, you know, the Fortran language people would really like to keep, um, to keep the language pure and make it sufficient to use just Fortran and not have to bring in all these other sidecars. Um, and so I'm, I'm of the opinion that if we want Fortran to be uh, sufficient, um, then, we need, then we need this sort of a feature. Um, and I will say, you know, don't let all of your um, disagreements about my syntax get in the way. Um, my syntax, I'm sure, will not be the one that gets in the stand standard if anything ever gets in. Um, so, let, you know, conceptually think about what are the semantics and the feature sets that we want, um, and then work with your, you know, local Fortran representative to, to try to define a syntax that's actually um, good for Fortran. Um, yeah, so those are my details. If you want to uh, harass me about this um, out of band, and obviously um, I'll, I'll take questions and then, you know, Slack as long as I can. Thank you. I'm done. I, I don't I, I don't know how much time I I saved or not saved. Yeah, I don't know if Nathan is but I see Bill as raised. Yeah, hands, I'll take so. Bill Bill you go ahead, Bill. Yep. Thanks. So a couple of comments. Uh well three actually. Uh I'm very much in favor of the idea of having do the current uh spill stuff out to GPUs. I propose this to our developers. And in fact, they said, oh, yeah, that wouldn't be very hard. We know how to do open ACC already. Uh, but there was one missing ingredient that is that no customer has ever asked for it. <laughs> so if you have any influence over the Lumi people, uh, tell them to ask for it. Then they'll do it. I, 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 I know George um, and Pekka, they're t because they're, they're right down the street. They're two of my very good friends. So I will... Uh, in about 20 minutes, I will be sending them a, a, a request to, uh, to ask for this. Um, but I will say, um, you know, NVIDIA implemented it, and we do have a lot of customers that are excited about it. So, you know, hopefully Craig can look at, at the fact that NVIDIA, uh, you know, invested in it as, as maybe there's a demand for this. Right. So that's, uh, that's number one. Number two is you can ask... Um, the NVIDIA people to make you an alternate to the J3 committee. I already uh, it doesn't require any attendance, but you would get on the email list. And so it might be helpful. Don't worry. I, I already am an alternate and I already am on the email list. Um, okay. okay. I just, I want to be very clear just because I'm on the email list and just because I showed up to the meeting this summer does not mean I actually know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> you know, receiving well. email does not convey any level of expertise. But it allows you to make suggestions. Yep. And uh, the, the window is more or less open for 22Y, which is the version of the standard after 22X uh, for proposals. So uh, I, am, I, I know how Malcolm feels about the, the current, current window. Um, and I, this is absolutely not going to go in quickly. So I'm targeting 2025. Right, yeah, the, the 22X, which is basically 22 or 23, is fixed at this point. Yeah. 
but there's a version come after that uh, that uh, people can make proposals for and it seems perfectly reasonable. So I would encourage that. If anyone's got any other questions, if you want to raise your hand. That's what I'm on microphone. Bill, you put your hand up still. You have more questions, or you can jump right in. Sorry. Um, does it okay, perhaps we should look for some questions off the Slack then. I mean, I'm trying right. to read, read them off the Slack right now. I'm just my too many things moving. Uh, Thomas, uh, fire away. So my question, well, my first question is at the top of your screen now. Um, essentially, is how would you com how would this look like in combination with task level parallelism on the outside and fine grain parallelism on the inside. So, I mean, suppose you have a, an algorithm that scales brilliantly up to four way task uh, uh, fine grain parallelism or six or whatever, but you, you know, this is not enough, right? So it's the idea that you put a task loop, I mean, to use OpenMP lingo, I guess, around it. And then the question is, what if these tasks have different scalability properties? How would you glue it all together? Yeah, um, well, so the the nesting property, um, if I'm if I'm living in a world of pure Fortran, I would you know I'd write a co-ray application. You know, for me, I'd write MPI, but I'll just say co-rays for my distributed memory and my NUMA nodes, and then I would use um, tasks for you know anything that is chunky, and then I would put do concurrent inside of that, and if I have a GPU. I would, you know, today's GPU systems, Lumi, Aurora, Frontier, uh, El Capitan, uh, whatever the, you know, everything that's a GPU system today has four GPUs or more, as far as I know, okay? Um, so that means if you've got do concurrent, you'd probably want, you want to saturate four GPUs. Well, you'd want to do task and then do, you know, do concurrent and try to fill those four GPUs. You can also pipeline, right? It, it, it our compiler team would be happier, you know, do concurrent performs better if you can get a stream of them going through the GPU because you can hide those latencies because you can only do so much with stop the world, offload, run the GPU, stop the world, copy back, right? That That's just not efficient. So, um, so you know, the, the compiler people, Garai has already um, been, thinking about this and how it works. So I think we have a pretty good idea of, of how the hierarchy would work. Um, I don't know about like task loop. I, you know, I think that task loop is syntactic sugar um, in OpenMP. So I'm not, I wouldn't worry too much about that one. I, I would just put a loop over async if, you know, if, to use the open ACC language. Okay. Um... Thanks again, Jeff. I think think we've got time for any more questions, but um, hopefully, you, Jeff yeah. will be happy to to try and address them in the the Slack chat. I think everyone's on. Um, 